Welcome to Restoring Black History, One Gravestone at a Time, and my journey to be enlightened by the truth. This is The Grave Truth. Jerome Owens was born on January 1, 1917 in Wildwood, Florida, and died October 2, 1965 in Asheville, North Carolina. We first find Jerome in the 1930 census where he's living with his parents and siblings in Lacoochee, Florida. They are his father, Anderson Owens, renting the home, listed as Negro, age 33, married at age 18, which is about 1915. His parents were also born in Florida, and he's a logger at a lumber company. His mother, Earthia, Negro, married at age 16, and she and her parents were also born in Florida. His older brother, Algiro, age 15, and Jerome was 13. In 1935, Jerome is now 17, still living in Lacoochee with his parents and brother. His brother is now 20 and working in the mill with his father. On October 16, 1940, Jerome registered for the World War II draft. He was 23, was living in Miami at the time, and working for Dr. DeBrock, a Miami Beach premises drugstore. His description was Negro, 5 feet 11 inches, 165 pounds, brown eyes, black hair, dark brown complexion. Although we don't have much information about his military experience, we know from his headstone application for military veterans that he enlisted in the Navy on December 2, 1943, and was discharged on August 1, 1944. In 1945, Jerome is now 27 and back living with his parents and brother, residing in Lake County, Florida. In 1950, when the census was taken, Jerome was at the Oteen, Virginia Hospital for Tuberculosis in Asheville, North Carolina. It lists him as being a veteran. Miraculously, thanks to science, prior to 1949, if you had TB, you were most likely not going to recover. However, in 1943, Selman Wakesman discovered a compound that acted against TB called streptomycin. The compound was first given to a human patient in November 1949, and the patient was cured. It's probably because of that medicine that Jerome survived. He married Miss Bessie Coleman two years after being released from the hospital. He was 36 and she was 35, and they were married on January 23, 1952, in North Carolina. He and Bessie continued to live in the Asheville, North Carolina area until their deaths. Jerome was a laborer, and Bessie worked as a maid at the Langren Hotel, and then later as a kitchen helper at the Oteen VA Hospital, where Jerome was once a patient. Jerome died at the young age of 48 of pulmonary tuberculosis and emphysema, and he passed away at the same Oteen VA Hospital. His obituary from the Asheville Citizens Times reads, Surviving are the widow, Bessie Owens, the parents, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson Owens of Lacucci, Florida, and a brother, Algiro Owens of Immokalee, Florida. Now, going backwards to Jerome's parents and siblings, we start with his father, who was Anderson Owens, born July 6, 1897, in Spar, Florida, which is Marion County. And he died August of 1978 at the age of 81. He was a laborer by trade and a part-time preacher at Friendship Baptist Church. He married Eartha Coleman on January 25, 1912 in Sumter County, Florida, and they were married for 61 years. In 1915, his first son, Algiro Owens, was born. Then 1917 came Jerome, and then 1918, his third son, Anderson Owens Jr., was born. That year, Anderson also registered for the World War I draft. Sadly, when their son Anderson Jr. was just two years old, he swallowed a poisonous substance and died. In 1923, Anderson and his wife moved their family to Lacucci, Florida, where they remained until their deaths. Jerome's mother, Eartha Coleman, was born December 5, 1899, in Florida, 
and died February 9, 1972, in Pasco County. There's an interesting newspaper article written about Anderson. In 1978, he was interviewed to talk about the house he lived in most of his life and how moving to public housing as a senior made him feel on top of the world. Here's an excerpt from that interview which gives you a great sense of what he was like. When asked what his late wife would have thought about the new house, he said, Eartha would be happy in this beautiful house, such a beautiful place to live in till I die, Anderson said softly while chewing tobacco and leaning back in the wooden chair on his little patio. Eartha and me was married 61 years. She died in 1972. She be in heaven because she was a good woman. She be in heaven with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The article went on to say, Anderson Owens, 85 years old last Easter, is a deeply religious man, a part-time preacher, a happy philosopher who says he's beginning a new life in the homey little Cypress Manor public housing project here. Quote, what a beautiful place God has provided for me, he said. The folks here, white and colored, get along good and help each other. We be proud of this place. We keep it looking nice. Always before, I lived in houses some folks called shacks, but they be good houses because I fix them up. I don't complain about them. Now, Jerome's oldest brother, Algiro, died October 11, 1992, at the age of 77. He's buried at Lake Trafford Cemetery in Collier County, which is near Fort Myers. There's an interesting story as to how he was buried. It turns out that a Finley Carter Jr. had buried several people at the cemetery without permission and without paying for the plots. The families entrusted him to take care of their deceased family's burial arrangements, but because Carter had run into financial trouble, he was taking the family's payments but not paying the cemetery for the plots. And since the cemetery was in a rural area with no caretaker, nobody noticed when these people were buried. Most of Algiro's 10 children and 40 grandchildren were at his burial for the ceremony. Algiro's grandson, Reginald Owens, who was 27 at the time, was interviewed after the revelation came to light, and he said, I saw the whole thing. He was buried here. Moving on from that, Algiro married Lily Bell and they went on to have 10 children. Going back a little further to Jerome's grandparents, in 1910, his grandfather, William Owens, was living in Spar. He was 42 and widowed at the time and working as a farmer. He was born in Florida, but his parents were born in South Carolina. That will be an important fact in a minute. There were also seven children at home, including Fred, Sam, Anderson, who's Jerome's father, Thomas, Minnie, Alice, and William. Now, notice on the census just above William is Miss Jessie Owens, who's white, age 35, single, born in South Carolina, remember where William's parents are from, and she owns the farm. Further, several lines above Jesse are two more white Owens ladies, Alice, age 50, who owns the farm, and Ella, her sister, age 35, who does not work. It turns out that those are three sisters who inherited a lot of money and property from their rich father. From this census, I speculated that the father of those sisters moved from South Carolina to Florida and took his slaves with him, which included William's parents. But what struck me the most was the fact that, if my speculations were correct, in 1910, William is still working for the White Owens family who enslaved his parents. Why would someone do that, I thought. It's possible that the White Owens were good to their slaves, and he felt at home there. Or... Perhaps they are all family. Now, here are the hard facts. It turns out that Alice Owens was one of 11 children born to James Byram Owens and Louise Harris. They owned 89 slaves on their cotton plantation in Marion County, Florida. According to Wikipedia, James Byram Owens was born about 1816 in South Carolina. 
He lived in Mississippi for a while, and then he moved to Florida. He died in 1889 and had been a Confederate congressman. According to Wikipedia, he, quote, was a slave owner and American politician who served as a deputy from Florida to the Provisional Congress of the Confederate States from 1861 to 1862. He mounted legal arguments in defense of secession based on an originalist interpretation of the U.S. Constitution and Southern arguments in favor of states' rights with the intention of protecting the practice and institution of slavery. It further states that, quote, Owens was one of the wealthier slave-owning planters in Marion County. His name appears on the 1860 slave census scheduled for Marion County, which attributes to him the ownership of 89 enslaved people. Owens used forced labor of enslaved people to work the land on his plantation where cotton was grown. You know, it's one thing to know from history books that some people were in favor of keeping slavery and then there were large groups of people who were against it. But it's another thing to see this in black and white, that he was known for lobbying to keep slavery in place and against, obviously, for their emancipation. James's plantation was located in the town of Millwood and had 18 cabins for those 89 slaves. So, returning to Jerome Owens, I found no record of he and Bessie having children, which was not surprising since they were married in their mid-30s. But since his brother had 10 kids, I'd bet family get-togethers were fun and noisy. His wife, Bessie, died in 1988 at the age of 72. Jerome was a Navy veteran And even after he contracted and survived TB, he continued working with the disease for many more years until his death. Rest in peace, Jerome Owens, and all your ancestors who came before you.